Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God. Welcome to the calling of the Revelator, part four. This is a presentation that I have been waiting for for the rest of my life. A presentation that I've been waiting for from the day that I was born. This is the day that marks the turning point of my calling as the revelator. So I want you to listen very careful. As I'm going to be teaching to you right now, I just want to confess that I had some spiritual emotional moments before presenting this, because this is a very special presentation. I have revealed so many things in my life that are very great, but this sermon is very special. So I want you to pay attention. It marks the turning point. This sermon unveils a new dimension in the spirit about the revelator. So today, in this spiritual inoculation, that is going to be unveiled by God himself, for he was the only one that was there for me, even when things were bad and good, in darkness and in light, he was always there. Welcome to the calling of the Revelator, part four. And today we are going to be focusing on a dimension, on a title, on a new position in the spirit, which is called the Legion Possessor. And we are also going to be focusing on another dimension that is called the Spirit Man without portfolio and the classified specialist in the spirit. So I want you to pay attention as I'm going to be explaining this new dimension. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 1. And it reads, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarians. And this was Jesus, the Son of God, with the disciples. This was a traveling ministry, a mobile ministry. And they traveled to the other side of the Gadarians after shipping from one end to the other. And where they have traveled, there, there is a man that is very special. I know in so many presentations that you have heard, you have heard the negative about this man. But God gave me a revelation before this spiritual inoculation before this unveiling of this rank, I was given a revelation in the spirit concerning this scriptural content. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately, but before I go any further, I just want you to know that earlier, before this passage that I'm reading, Jesus had to calm down a storm, had to calm down a wind that was very powerful, that was fighting, that he doesn't get to the other side of the sea, because there was a man who was special, a man that was gifted in many unique abilities, a man whose destiny had been chained. And Jesus was the only one that could deliver this man with the, a unique ability that had many abilities. So Jesus had to calm down the storm. And this is the only reason why Jesus was crossing over to the side. I'm going to explain so that you understand. And when, the, when Jesus and the disciples stepped out of the ship, Immediately, they met him out of the tombs, 
a man with an unclean spirit. It's very evident that this man's life was now over. A man that was now staying or residing by the tombs, it means he was now rejected, he was now condemned, he was now finished. If a man is now staying by the tombs, it means his life is now dead. He had no other way. He had no other reason to survive. He had definitely found no purpose in his life. And meaning that whatever was haunting this man, it made sure that he had to be driven away from the people. A man who had an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, and not with the chains. I want to talk about this part. The reason why this man had unclean spirits, and one major unclean spirit that was so powerful that no man could bind him, is because the ability that was in this man was also a very strong, powerful, unique ability. This man had many abilities in him which needed a many forces of disabilities that would come and bind his ability so that he could not become what he was expected to be in the kingdom of God. And this is why the spirit could not be binded by anyone. And the scripture says, because of that, he had been often bound with the fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither man could tame, tame him. And the people that were around him could only bind him with chains. They could not deal with his situation spiritually, but they could deal with his spiritual situation physical, which was an irrelevant way of dealing with his situation. I've come in situations whereby my life was completely confused and no one understood me. And people could only bind my situation with the fetters, with the chains. People could only describe my situation as those that used the chains to bind the situation that was meant to be dealt with spiritually. I've come in situations where I fought spiritual battles that no one knows about. And only Jesus was the answer. But before that chapter of Jesus came, people would bind my situation and deal with it using chains instead of addressing the issue spiritually. Instead of having people that could understand that this was a spiritual situation, I only had people that could deal with the situation by binding it with the chains. And no man could tame him. That is what the scripture says. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. I don't know how many situations that I've gone through in my life dealing with the spiritual situations, dealing with the spiritual forces of darkness that only I myself could only see raised in a family of six as the third born and I was the only one that could fight certain forces that no one else could see growing up isolated feeling deserted feeling unusual being made to feel that I was very unusual being made to feel that I was rejected and condemned, being made to feel that I had no purpose, 
this is not how people made me feel, but this is how the devil made me feel using people. Night and day, he was in the mountains, crying, stressed, cutting himself with the stones, not because he wanted to cut himself with stones, but because he was caring more than many forces that were trying to lock down the multiple abilities that he had. But when Jesus, I like this part, when Jesus from far off came, he ran and worshipped him. I want to explain about this part. Most people think that what worshipped Jesus at that particular point of time was the spirit that was inside this man. But it's a different situation. Indeed, demons, they worship Jesus because he is the king of kings. But also this man, it is the nature of God himself inside him. His spirit also ran and worshipped Jesus. And came out a spirit and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And a certain particular point of time, in this particular spiritual moment, he asked him and said, what is thy name? I want you to listen carefully. And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. I want you to understand this part. Jesus has asked a question that refers to an individual spirit. But the spirit that is responded is answered a response that covers not an individual but many. Because the spirit that is responded knows that it was possessing a man that had multiple abilities. The spirit that was possessing this man knows that it has hijacked a man that had many dimensions of unique strengths that were made disabled. The spirit that has responded knows that it has possessed a man that is supposed to be doing several dimensions of abilities several dimensions of spiritual reigns in the kingdom of God. And it responded saying, my name is Legion. A Legion meaning many in the spirit, for we are many. And it responded on behalf of all the other demons that were not only possessing but filling the space and blocking the abilities that were applicable to the number of the demons that were possessing, closing the dimensions of the abilities, the same number of abilities that were inside this man. For how can you be possessed by a legion if you are useless? For how can a chief demon that calls itself legion because it is accompanied by many representatives of other demonic spirits that count that count up to a number of 2000 they leave other useless bodies only to flock to one man what was special about this man it means that there was something special about this man that i want to unlock i want to talk about the legion possessor the possessor of abilities, the possessor of all powers, the possessor of multiple colors, the possessor of multiple colors, like the 
jacket of many colors that Joseph was given. Joseph was the interpreter of dreams. He was given a jacket of many colors. I don't want to expand this, people of God, but I want to explain this spiritual rank so that you understand it. Jesus asked this man, what is thy name? And he, he, instead of the man answering, a spirit answers and says, I am legion because it is the one that is possessing this man and covering the abilities that are hidden inside this, this man. And at that particular moment, and he besought him much that he would not send them away of the country. This was now the spirit bargaining with Jesus. Now there was a nigh unto the mountains, a great head of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. The spirits know how much damage they can cause upon being sent out, such that they beg and beg with Jesus that at least we, you send us into the swine, because we know how much effect you can cause. If we are sent into someone that doesn't have the abilities that this man has, that he doesn't have the power to contain us, is what this man had in him. And forthwith, Jesus gave them a leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the head ran violently down a steep into the sea, and there were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. I have explained why these demons, why this legion that spoke of many demons, that spoke also on behalf of many other spirits back into the Jesus. Why they had to be sent into a swine instead of begging to be sent into another body. And part of the reason why these spirits begged to be sent into the swine is because the very same people that were running this business were evil people that had sacrificed to their gods that these spirits remain possessing a man that was supposed to take over the city using the weight. It was the same man that was binded. The evil man that ran their business, justified by evil, they ran their business on behalf of someone's soul. Their businesses were booming because of a man that was binded by 2,000 spirits. And they that fed the swine, the workers of this of these business people, ran and told in the city and in the country, and went to tell the owners of the business what had happened, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and saw him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. I will repeat that part. They came and saw him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. The legion possessor of abilities, now clothed and in his right mind, he has been freed from the legion of demons, but he still has a legion of abilities. And this is the only reason that Jesus has come to the other side of the Caterians, shipping to the other end. And when these men saw this, they were very afraid. Do you know why they were afraid? It's because they knew what this meant in the spirit. If this man is now free, it means we are finished because they were evil people. And they that saw this told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their costs. This is now Jesus suffering the persecution for delivering a man that was going to be a damage in the city. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. 
How about listening to this part? Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell him, tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee. And straight away this man departed and began to up, to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Meaning that this man was the only reason why Jesus had come to the other side of the Gadarenes, crossing over and shipping to the other end. In all scriptures that I've read in the Bible, there's never a city that Jesus had to ship with his disciples just to go and deliver one man. A man that had enough abilities to cover the whole city. Jesus knows that after delivering this man, I have no other man that is worthy to be delivered because I have delivered a city. After delivering one man that was possessed by a legion of spirits, I have made free a legion of many abilities. I have unlocked the legion possessor of many abilities, the spirit man without portfolio, the classified specialist in the spirit, a man of no fixed abode, but wherever he is, he addresses the weight that goes an extra mile. He is not fixed in one place in the spirit. He is no place to, to, to lay his head upon. For years, many abilities, people of God, I want you to understand that it, there's the classified in the spirit, the specialist in the spirit, the spirit man without portfolio, the legion possess of all abilities in the spirit. Until next time, have a blessed day.